Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Sprout Taking on Mobby Star Riders. My name is Mitch, and with me somewhere is Dean. We're ready to jump on into Nuke, the third map of the series, and it's certainly been a uh, questionable one so far. Yeah, no, that, that last map was just full of uh, full of mistakes from really both sides, especially when they were on their T side. In the end, of course, the Mobby Star Riders they did manage to pick up a few towards the end. It seemed like they got a little bit of a read of about how Sprout were holding it and. Of course, we've seen them beginning to step up a little bit. I'm curious now if they're going to be able to carry that on over towards Nuke now. Of course, that knife round going in favor of Sprout as well puts them with the CT start. And statistically, this is a better map for Sprout than it is for Mavi Star Riders. But I mean, it, it, if we were looking at statistics, train should have been almost a, like 100% a the 100 map that Sprout were going to win. So who knows? Heading on to Nuke now is going to be an interesting one. And it looks like we're going to see a pretty fast approach from Mavi Star. The door being blown off. Mopo's looking like he was going to try and get out towards the vent quickly, but they do just slow it down for the moment. They're taking their time afterwards, although eventually angling back over towards the door. Sadly, with that door wide on open, Keto's able to peek those longer range angles. Eventually peek by three blocks, so that's not a nice look for him as he's torn apart. Oh, Mervin. Oh, okay. Two come through in the end. That got a little bit awkward for a second. Because he missed so many shots onto the dabbing opponents as they were full blind jumping down the vent. Into a 3v2, but they have no idea. Alex is lurking up close. He's waiting for someone to try and hunt down behind in the vent. And then he'll swing out with that Glock. The timing's not too good for him, though. It looked like it could have been, but Fathom was ready for it. And if Soaker picks up Spitty, it's still a 1v2. Oh, nice shot, Soaker. And a bomb plan should be secured, because he knows exactly where Fathom's coming from. Yeah, it's going to be a, uh, a pretty difficult one indeed right now without that defuse kit. You see Soaker been able to creep back around as well, making his way through Vent. Was the door closed by Favon? I believe he actually did go ahead and close it, so we'll be able to know if Soaker is coming around. But the issue is the time running down at this point. It's getting a little bit awkward. Goes to clear out single and is going to go ahead and just try and actually hold it now, it seems. Eventually does pop off. Soaker just doing his best to play the time, stays alive and eventually takes a headshot for himself. And that will, of course, be Mavi Star Riders going ahead and picking up this opening pistol here on Nuke. And especially with him being on the T side, that's very important, of course. Yeah, it absolutely is. You want to get yourself some rounds on the board here, especially as both teams have really struggled on the CT side, or the T side, rather, in the previous map. Although it's not a one-to-one -one comparison, you are seeing a, uh, you know, two of the more uh, T sided maps coming out. Fabin's been stacked up here. They drop him over a Deagle, so he's got an armor and Deagle to work with. Definitely a combination that could cause some trouble for these Ts, but doesn't, as he's very quickly swept up by Alex. Nice nade goes down, hits well to 28 HP, so for a 35, but even with that, you've uh, you've not got control over that site. The Mavi Star can now play pretty passive and just look for crossfires. Yeah, not much chance for this retake coming through, even with that defuse kit. I mean, Mixwell and Soaker are quite low, so maybe if they're able to find those kills quickly, there'd be a chance. But as you said, we do see Mavi Star Riders just taking this a little bit slower now. With the uh, with the five on three and the bomb down, they just dropped the smokes, and pretty much with that, there's not much that Sprout could do. Saving the pistols and Kevlar right now, really the only option. Give themselves a bit of a chance, at least in this next round, to try and get some damage in. Unfortunately, though, probably not going to happen in this round. They shot by Keo. But of course, Cirrus in the meantime did end up going down. That is the player at least that didn't have Kevlar, so not quite as heavy of an, of an investment. But Keo, he tries to go forward and gets dropped. That's a, an interesting choice because they're not fine in this round no matter what. And uh, I, I don't really feel like it was too worthwhile for him trying to get that little bit of extra damage right there with the with the Deagle and the Kevlar. And I think he also had a bit of utility in play. I am a little bit surprised to see the aggression going through echo your points you know, you're not buying anything here so it makes a lot more sense carry forward as many weapons as many pistols even as you can do as much damage as possible Merbit carries forward a deagle now that's the only upgraded pistol to come through for sprout they've bought up a few nades and that is the best shot at the round keto goes down before being able to deploy his as he peeks towards outside, he gets shut the hell down, and the angle from Mixwell works out perfectly. His smokes dissipate. He sees the nade coming, so avoids taking a lot of damage. Molotov from Spitty the hell? is questionable, but he comes through with a kill nonetheless. Yeah, that was interesting. Mixwell didn't notice that the Molotov had been thrown from their either, so they ended up still gonna getting caught off guard. Didn't really affect the round too much in the end, of course. Alex able to pick that AK up anyway, so I think just dropping over his own SMG to retrieve it. 
But a 3-0 start here from Avistar. It's a, a good scoreline to kick things off with on the T side of Nuke if they can pick up this first gun round as well, especially they put themselves in a great position. And after seeing the T side back on train, you, you definitely want to see them picking up at least six or so rounds here on the T side of Nuke. There oh, we go, mix well. Opening. That is beautiful. Such a nice angle there. Spitty was blind as well. They're just completely taken down. Not sure if they're 100% aware of where that kill came through. They jump over the door though, so evidently they're aware there could be an op there. Kill doesn't go through for the AK, but it's still a man advantage in play for that terrorist side. Crowd are kind of trapped now. They don't exactly know where that AWP is lurking around. They have to make an info play, and it's Searson pushing in through Squeaky that does that. Problems. He's cleared out everything outside of A except for Hut, where Mopaz is sitting down on a Mac 10. This could get very scary as they're not gonna they're now going to take for granted with Searson holding this angle that Mopaz cannot be here. More than likely they'll forget about that small position. And as kills come through and they make it towards outside, Mopaz can have a huge flank. Alright, this is gonna be a little bit awkward indeed. Just kind of chilling and towards off for the moment. Keo just so focused on heaven in case he, in case they've actually wrapped around that he needs to be a bit more cautious. Peeks towards main though and is able to take down Nixwell. Favin gives him some help right there as he's about to be taken down from the side. And speaking of Favin, he comes in to finish it off as well as Soaker in towards main is taken down. That's going to be the open and gun round gun in favor of Sprout in a, uh, a decent fashion as well. Able to keep three players alive. I mean, that, that means they're able to easily drop over the weapons that were needed, which is of course ideal. As we do see Mavi Star Riders been able to rebuy up themselves. Again though, Mopo's gonna be just stuck on a Mac 10. Elsewhere though, the off been available, the, the rifles and pretty much any uh, pretty much all the utility rider that they could ask for. And it looks like they may try and take things once again, pretty similar to that previous round. This time Mixwell doesn't get the kill. But I mean not too much luckier for Speedy as he just about survives on 16 HP, getting wall banged this time around. Yeah, the, it's a bit of an awkward spot in the previous round though. Mopaz with the Mac 10. I thought that he would go for the flank around left side site as teammates pressured in main it all looked fantastic but then he crossed the site and Favon was able to spot him out even though he was heavily focused towards main outside so didn't quite go according to plan but it was a good play at the end of the day this time they don't find that opening with the AWP luckily Spitty obviously able to survive on 11 HP gives them a small bit of an advantage uh, but I would definitely say Movistar, even with that play from Mopaz pushing around the far angle of the site, could have went their way. Those are really bad smokes on outside. As Spitty gets aggressive, he's going to come up behind them here. What's the angle like for Dats? Now the timing works out really poorly as Dats wasn't there to watch the angle. He was watching it for quite a while. But as he turns away, Spitty gets aggressive and finds an opening duel. And that was a player that was left on 11 HP making the plays. Yeah, now time is becoming a real issue for them as well. They only have 30 seconds to get down through ramp. You see, said the second they are spotted, Sirison just falls back off. He's been chased at the moment, though. All right, or not Sirison, I would say Mirbit. And he will actually be able to find one quick kill. The second, not expecting him to be down in that gubby, apparently, but still able to flick over to take that headshot back. So Soaker actually able to double down as well as Speedy gets a little bit aggressive over towards the window room. And suddenly that bomb does end up going down in a three on three. I feel like Speedy there definitely should have just tried to stay alive, allow for them to have that man advantage working into the retake. Instead now it can get a little bit dicey indeed, and there we go, Mixwell with a quick peek, Favin falls, and Sirison and Keo, I don't know if they even want to attempt this retake anymore. Oh, Keo, he has a good position though, if he got that frag it definitely would have been doable, but no longer. Yeah, it's time to get out of there, but even doing that is going to be hard, he spotted, they're going to hunt him down. They've not got a lot of money actually, so... But they also have to exit, making the right choice to go over towards the ramp together. Trying to assure themselves that they won't lose any further rifles. As they don't want to feel the sting of that little bit later on. Allowing one AK forward could push Sprouts and maybe force by. Searson can take an AWP. And have Spitty Murbit on weaker weapons. Favin takes a Deeg. Possible. Um, at this stage, I would say it's viable as well. You don't want the T-side to build up too many rounds, and they're starting to gain control over their economy. But it's also, it's also risky. If you make the force buy right now, and it doesn't work out, and especially if you don't find that many kills, then Movistar walk away with pretty much the half. That already have a huge scoreline and a huge financial lead. Paul's comes through to discuss it. I think probably they just go with the eco and give over a fifth to Movistar Riders and hope for an almost flawless CT side afterwards.
Yeah, this is going to be a little bit awkward. This is just not the start that Sprout would have been hoping for here on Nuke. If they end up losing this best of three after taking that opening map 16 to three, then losing their own map choice and then coming onto a, another map where they are relatively decent, it's just going to be it's going to be heartbreaking for them. I mean, it's not the end of the road, of course. The uh, the loser of this goes on to face off against Team Spirit, I believe, in that third place decider to see who's the uh, the third team to qualify to the global challenge, of course. But y you want to try and you want to try and win this one. You want to get into the grand finals and, of course, play for that little bit of extra money, I believe, that is on the line. Not quite sure of the specifics and how much. I can actually have a quick look. Yeah, so is there actually? No, no. The the money actually only gone for fourth place. So uh, if you uh, if you don't qualify, that's when you get that bit of money. The loser at a third place decider gets twenty five hundred dollars. But of course, you'd much rather go to the global challenge. That's where you will be confirmed getting money, I believe, for competing no matter what. And obviously, with a chance to buy to to, to get even more rather. But um. Yeah, it's it's not looking amazing for Sprout. This should be an eco coming true. It looks like they may be considering maybe buying up a little bit. I suppose Sirison could probably pull out like uh, Pistol and Kevlar. Speedy could probably do the same. Mirbit get a little bit as well. But the AK that's saved over by Keto should be the only rifle that they're going to have to play with into this round. As yeah, so if you come, uh, if you come first, second, or third here, you're guaranteed thirty-seven fifty, even if you completely bomb out of the global challenge. Pretty good teams there as well. You got Furia, Party Astronaut, Singularity, ATK, and Chiefs already confirmed. Nice to see Chiefs over there. They're representing the Aussies. But the uh, yeah, like obviously making it into the global challenge. First place is twenty five k, fifteen for second, and ten k for third through fourth. So it's definitely more desirable to make it all the way to the end. And Sprout would guarantee themselves a spot there if they can just walk over the line with this. The thing is, right now, Movistar Riders, if you ignore the first map completely, they look far better. They Well, maybe not far better, but they figured out their opponents on the T-side of train towards the end, which is the whole point. You know, it's why we say you can give so much leeway towards the terrorist side. If you lose the pistol round on train, and then you start losing buy rounds when it gets to like seven zero that's where it's like okay you better have them figured out now and at least get around on the board um but the more time goes on the more you get to figure out what your opponents are doing how they like to play and try to counter strat them and once you've them figured out that's where you can start to build up your rounds but the fact that you only kind of need five or six and you can have that slower start it's okay nuke is kind of the same but Mobby Star Riders winning at the pistol puts them in such a positive position that you're no longer saying, okay, well, if they get six, they'll be pretty happy. But the fact that they've got a four to one lead and the fact they should have five to one, I think you're looking at seven rounds and as being a very, very strong possibility to get on the board. And, and if they can pull that off, they'll have a decent chance when they swap over. Considering the fact that we've definitely seen Sprout struggle on the terror side so far. And I'm going to hope that that was map specific um and not just a, an issue with their comms or something like that right now because there were some rounds where they just looked completely lost yeah i'm the, i i'm hoping that we do see spro picking it up but i mean right now mobby star riders they're just as you said in such a great position they should be finding themselves a fifth round and if they can keep up how they've been performing throughout those previous rounds then there's a, an opportunity for them to find even more than seven perhaps well let's see Pistols and Kavanaugh being brought out into a couple of players on Sprout to back up that AK. There is definitely some opportunity for the CT side to, to put up a little bit of a fight in this round and see what they can get done. But of course, Mobby Star Riders, they're playing this one pretty safe right now. Mopo's holding for this aggression in towards the hut, waiting to see if anyone's going to push forward and gift them a frag. Death's just posted up over on ramp as they did, of course, break those windows above the A bomb site and are probably just going to look for an execute in there towards the uh, the latter part of the round, or at least they do have the option to do so if they want to. Maybe a bit of outside control now to come in as we see that smoke being set up by Mixwell, of course. Yeah, they're certainly looking to bring things towards the outside for now. The smokes go down, we're looking for the third, there it is coming over. There's effective cross smokes for them. They can get down to secret pretty cleanly. And it looks like they'll be doing so. Proud of pistols in play, so this is a round that um, going down secret is definitely risky. 
I thought Spitty was actually down there. Hold on, let me cycle through and figure it out. Goddamn nuke, three-dimensional. Nobody's in secret right now? They've given up complete control. The closest player is on ramp. Murbit rotates down now, but look how much control Mobby Star Riders have because of that. That's uh, questionable. They go down through vents. Murbit's maybe not going to be expected to be up this close, especially now that they've taken Keto down. Murbit has got that ninja all lined up for him. Ooh, Murbit actually able to find themselves a second frag oh around the Mopos as well. There's not going to be enough time unless they get this bomb down right now. Death comes in for a frag, but there's just not enough. Th oh, okay, never mind. I didn't even realize he had held it down. And Alex actually find himself a couple of frags. It's a 1v1, though. That's so much closer than it should have been. They just about managed to clinch it out. And honestly, I didn't think he got that down in time. I, I thought he hit the bomb once it was on three. But just about managed it. The 1v1 going in their favor. But, I mean, overall, that was pre pretty good damage coming through from Sprout. I think they'll be pretty happy with that. They've actually managed to put Mobby Star Riders into a position where one round loss would put them on an eco. When I said that Murbit had the position for the ninja, I, I didn't think, uh, didn't quite think he was going to be tapping people through the smoke. That was incredible. Kind of, like, went to the smoke at a random spot, which happened to be the dude's head, waited a second to see, like, can I see a foot? Can I see anything? No, I'll just fire. <laughs> Gets the head straight away. That's incredible. But still, they don't connect the round. Now full bike comes through from Sprout. They've got the ROP. They've got the rifles to work with. The Mavi Star Riders, after the losses in the previous round, their economy isn't too healthy. If they lose this, you can definitely see Sprout coming back into it. But like I said before, you're looking for a pretty much flawless CT side from this point forward. As you've given Mavi Star Riders such a heavy start that if they continue to clock rounds up, it could be uh, mucho scarios for you. The Sprout, I mean, like we said, we haven't seen them recover yet from the Train T side. And all, we haven't seen an attacking side from them, rather, since Train, and that was really, really bad. Yeah, much slower round right now, though, coming true from obviously their Riders. Beginning to actually advance outside with a couple of players, and that's going to be finding a very nice catch there on towards Biddy. Able to just commit down into Secret off the back of it as well. Didn't actually even have to spot out his opponent who he was able to drop. Keo in a decent position, but he has a lot of players to deal with. Gets two before the op of Mixwell. Appears to be a little bit too much for him to handle. And three on three now in play as they actually set up for an A split instead. So Alex dropping down, coming up through the vents then was Mixwell. Unfortunately for Favin being the sole defender of that actual A bomb site, he isn't able to get anything done from the back of it. A 2v3 now, Sirison on the flank, he may be the one to give them a chance to pull it back, and he does indeed drop Mixwell, but he takes an upshot in return as well. Oh, Murbin, nice shot. Okay, Mopa's last alive. He can take these guys down with one or two bullets. But there is an AWP up against him. He's got time on his side, though. They have no information. Nate goes through, brings that in the back of it, 75 HP. Oh, he actually wallbangs Murbin there, but eventually connects the final shot. And it's six to one. Des uno. And there you go. It's my best Spanish. I'm not even going to try it, man. <laughs> six to one. I mean, look, Mavi Star, I can give him a lot of credit on the previous map uh, when they were getting building up a lead early on. Yeah, you know, they've definitely shown us that they've got what it takes. Mm. And just the fact that they were able to recover from that first map as well. Yeah. Come back, take the win on Train, and it looks so good here on Nuke so far. It's definitely an impressive showing from them. And up against the Pistols and the Cablar again, they should be taking themselves a 7 to 1 lead. Already an advantage being found by Soaker there towards outside. It's Sirison who goes down early on. Sprout are just having a, a very difficult time right now on the CT side to actually get anything going. It's super important for Mixwell really to be able to, uh, to put up good results. Like, there's a lot of pressure on his shoulders. Leaving to leaving the kind of international scene to play that more domestic Counter Strike and build up a, a local team, so to speak, or a national team to a good level. For him to see the uh, to start contesting teams like Sprat and stuff, it, it's good. I mean, Mavi Star Riders are definitely on the up and up to what we used to see from them in like Hotshot Season One and stuff, where they were kind of a team that posed little threat uh, to those around kind of Sprat's level. Last couple of months, they've really uh, started to amp up their performance it's good to see that, that level of improvement over time yeah and especially to see Mixwell stepping it up on the up 
uh, yeah. in these last two maps, it's been something that, of course, is a necessity from obviously their riders for these wins. Soaker to go ahead and find himself one there. a damage onto the initial player as well, helping Mopos to go ahead and finish him off. And with that now a 5 on 2, the bomb already down and ticking away, of course. Well, only a bit left standing for Sprout. That 7 to 1 lead indeed is going to be confirmed. And it, again, it looks like. It should be at least a relatively decent uh, clean round rider here from obviously their riders. They've been having a decent amount of clean rounds. It's just over that the last couple they weren't really able to build up any money, unfortunately. This one though, that's gonna change that. Maybe it's waiting though. He may be able to find himself a frag or two on the exit. Are they gonna be expecting this? I, I don't think so. Death's has no idea. Oh, spotted though, takes out Mopos before getting dropped. One frag, I mean it's better than none. Seven to one. I mean, it's just like uh, just like Spain in the World Cup. Am I right? <laughs> Sorry, I just want to see how hard I could trigger chat. <laughs> I, I figured you were joking. I know you yeah. don't know football very well, but I figured you were joking. Oh, I was watching that. I we did a a sweepstake, and I got Germany. I tried to trade the guy who had Argentina. <laughs> yeah, he was uh, he was begging for that trade a couple weeks a couple weeks after. But yeah. <laughs> You, you did trigger someone. You triggered a few people. I see them already typing in the chat. <laughs> At least they speak the same language, so it's easy to uh, up between. So, Mavi start with an AWP in play, and Sprout have the same. A couple of rifles, a couple of uh, M4s. What is the one Aug? I know it's something we're seeing with the Aug kind of not, not as prevalent with some of the players as it used to be. Especially on a map like Nuke here, where if you're playing inside or towards or anything, you're probably better off having the M4 with a higher fire rate. But right now, let's see, with the Sprout, they are finding somewhat uh, a decent amount of success towards outside. It's actually gone heavily in favor of them since they've begun that sentence with Cirrus and Keto being able to find a frag each as well. Leaving it all onto deaths now. And one on three in play. Does have the bomb, but gets spammed around the edge of that smoke by Speedy. Seven to two. Sprout gonna pick themselves up another round. Three players surviving, they'll be able to drop over to Favon, of course, who needs one. And I mean, the money isn't great from obviously their riders. They can buy onto everyone except for Mopo, so I'd imagine that they will. Mopo's got the Mac 10 out. He's looking for the faster, close range engagements. He needs to go through. And we're going to see a very fast push towards A. Smoke goes in the Molotov a little bit late. Lots of damage already taken. It's happening away on the AUG. Fabric shows it's still viable. Three on the four. Low HP on two. Nick Swallows in a 1v3. He's got 35 HP. Maybe he falls him down the van, but it's not going to do too much. He's already out, making his way towards the B side to get that bomb planted. A little bit of extra cash for his teammates. Yeah, at least finding that bomb plant. Like, that's a, a big positive, as you said. It's, uh, I mean, not a great round overall, because they do end up losing it. Their money not going to give them enough for the full buy in this next round either way. But already having seven on that T side, getting the bomb plant down there, give them a bit of a, a bit of firepower, at least in this next round. They should be at least able to get some pistols out. Allowed end for Sprout to likely bring it up to four. But they're still in a, a good spot where seven already on the T side is decent. Well, pretty good. All things considered, though, they will want a little bit more, and it's just all about that grind. So, Eco probably going to come true here. And a bit of an opportunity for Sprout to try and build up their money, most importantly, because that's when things get really difficult on Nuke, when you can't get that money going on the CT side. When it's fragile and you keep getting it broken, when you can't afford the utility and the ops to hold down. Let's see if Sprout can go ahead and make sure that that's not going to be an issue now in this round. Up against the only pistols, Kevlar on the mix well, a bit of utility for Alex. And it looks like it is just going to be a straight up ramp rush coming through from that D side. Yeah, indeed, just barreling towards there. They find one for ones. That's perfect. Low HP on a couple of players, but if they can get this bomb planted, they will be happy, unfortunately. Sprout have already been a take down. Now they've got the range advantage firmly in their favor. And Tippity tapping away on the AUG. Mo pause is gone on a quick spray. Seven to four. No matter where we end up, though, this is a great half. Excuse me, great half from Star Riders. They're going to be feeling uh, pretty confident as their terror side has yielded so many rounds. Right at this point, and they've got a little bit of cash left over in reserve if they lose this round. So it's not looking likely that Star may get to like double digits by the end. But uh, at the end of the day, and, I mean, they've done enough. They can be comfortable. They can be chilled out, and it's Sprout that have a lot of pressure on their shoulders. Nice opening by Sears, and is he able to make it out of there alive? Nice flashbang, so we can continue to aggress, find anybody that was trying to trade out. Head puts the Molotov. 
Drops a smoke on it as it falls. Oh, the spam through the smoke there on the Saracen actually took quite a bit of damage. Down to 56. I mean, he's definitely still in the round, but it is a little bit awkward being up close with only that Deagle and AWP. Not the best of weaponry to creep up and around the smoke once again. He's still not spotted for the moment. Eventually, though, deaths will take him down. So a four on four now in play. Eventually, one back being pulled back. And I was going to say it's a pretty decent position still for Sprout, even though it is the 4v4 because Soaker was low HP. But he goes ahead and just rips off the head of a player towards spawn. It was Spitty who went down, of course. And with that now, a four on three in play and still 50 seconds from obviously Star Riders to bring this towards one of those bomb sites. And it looks like they're going to try and bring it back inside. Yeah, swinging in towards the ramp by the looks of things. You've got a passive hold coming through from Murbit. He's got a Molotov. That's going to delay so much time. They're going to have to push through it. Smoke goes down. Now he knows they're coming. Ready for the fight, but it doesn't go his way. Fight the damage down on Soaker and Mopaz. You've only got Favin down here towards this side. 20 seconds on the clock isn't enough to just drop the bomb and run away. He smoked out in the doorway. Makes it towards the window. Flashes going through. Just spamming, hoping to find somebody. It's not happening, and then push down behind as the window was already shattered. They can make it down sneaky beaky like. Eight to four. Mobster Riders do really well to get that round, but they're still up against a full buy. Anything from this point forward, anything from the previous round forward, is just a bonus. And at this point, they are looking very likely to close it out. We need to see Sprout win every single one of these rounds. And if they lose here, then Mobby Star Riders hit double digits. I yeah, also that... really like what they're doing. They're consistently nading the door, nading out further, flashing out, so that they don't know if it's going to be a fast rush towards A, down vents, or just passive hold with the AWP. They've, they've done everything with it, and it's really confusing to decide, but even still, they have a man advantage in that early fight. Yeah, it seems to definitely be like a, a, a focal point of their default of pressure towards that position, so that you know that Sprout never really know what's going on. They can be swapping it up over on the Movistar Riders side, but that part of the play is always going to be there. So it's something that they always have to try and worry about somewhat. But early on in this round, anyway, I mean, a two for two trade, not too bad for Movistar Riders. They should be quite happy with that, especially with, with it being a map like Nuke. There's just so many places to try and cover. And with two of those players being straight up on the A-bomb site right now, that gives so much opportunity for Movistar Riders to wrap around, get control towards Hell and Heaven, maybe even bring it down towards B through the ramp. But if they do bring it onto A, then they could be in for a little bit of a surprise with Speedy and Keo both playing around this position. Throwing a bit of a fury there. Let's catch them off guard with crazy aggression. But it was crazy. Uh, now into the 3v3, Movistar Riders look to take it towards the A site. Oh, the barrel's being spotted though. It's all by he goes down with AWP, Speedy. Nobody doesn't find it. Only two seconds on the clock. Searson's not being hurt in the vents. He's got the AWP out. Alex, aware of it, drops a nade. Searson's being spotted. Gets naded down to 39 HP. He manages to make it to the vents, though. Alex, so slow to peek out, out towards that angle. I was wearing the bomb. I, I, I honestly don't know how he didn't know Searson was up then. Okay. Good question. It, it looked like he wanted to stick it until he knew that he was coming up for sure. But as soon as you hit him with that nade and know that he's in the vent, if you're going to stick it, just go around to the other side of the, the bomb site. And if you're going to tap it, do it quickly. I mean, you don't want to peek it quickly because of uh, it. If you make the step, then of course they're going to know that you're not on the bomb actually planted it. But I mean, he held it for quite a while before hopping off of that plant right there. Yeah, it was a really, really weird situation. As soon as you're going to commit to that, I feel like after waiting so long, you've got to swing out on him. You know it's an op you're up against. I mean, you yeah. cannot slow people off like that when he's already up. Six to eight now. A good recovery so far from Sprout, but I mean, eight rounds already on the T side, or even just eight, eight rounds in general on the T side from obviously Star Riders is something they can be happy with. At least they're starting to pull it pull it back towards the end, and you can give the fact that Mavi Star Riders won the pistol. So a little bit of grace towards Sprout, but the scoreline is still not ideal. Well, at the same time, like we said, really, Movistar would be happy with kind of seven on the board. They managed to find that with the pistol in their favor and early leads. Brown have managed to recover the previous round, but I definitely wouldn't put that down to great plays. We've seen a lot of holes, uh, like the 4v3, and they just decide to push ramp. And 
You had to rely on massive individual plays. Pity on the site did so well to shut down mixed and stuff in that round. But end of the day, one for one's open it up, putting Mavi Star ahead. If they made it to nine six and then win the pistol, it's almost over at that point. Because it's not so much like winning both pistols guarantees you win, but winning both pistols and performing pretty well uh, throughout the buy rounds, like uh, better than I expected to be honest from Mavi Star coming into this map. I'm yeah, really starting to feel their chances. One thing we've seen is they've been trading so much better here on Nuke when they're pushing, they're, like they're doing so together. Yeah, and they're just always ready. Even if they aren't pushing, they just always have another player who's ready to peek out. And uh, of course, when you're on the T side, keeping the equal trades even is, is always going to put you in a favorable position. And if you just close out even half of those situations, then you're getting yourself a, a decent amount of rounds on the grind. And that's a really nice find there for Mixwell. Takes down Mirabit. Oh, this the spot there as well and the spitty dropping down the vent he decides he was going to go up extremely quickly again that was actually a two on two i was going to say in the meantime though alex opens up a bomb still goes down on b so he's got to rotate quickly because keo wants to go forward right now he was somewhat being cautious of that back corner should be aware of course that mixwell has to be towards the bomb site somewhere as he was planting it and even as he was focused on it mixwell just steps out for a headshot nine to six a half time for mavi star riders they're going to be extremely happy with that t-side if they pick up the second pistol round, then we'll probably just see them been able to run away with it. I feel like Sprout definitely need this pistol to get to get that momentum going. Right, if the pistol doesn't go the way of Sprout, I lose a lot of faith. I mean, that's a phenomenal T side from Mavi Star Riders, even winning at the the pistol. What we saw from them before was the early start on train. They had such little economy, but they managed to gain control in every single aspect. I mean, it wasn't a case of they're winning a little bit, they're getting momentum up and Sprout kind of figure them out a little bit. And uh, the variation that they had, like like we said, you know, that focal point towards Squeaky dropping their nades consistently using the same same kind of same kind of utility, which put it into a position where Mavi Star Riders didn't know whether it was going to be an A rush, a vent rush, or just a hold, a, a slower push towards the site with the AWP holding further back. And they did it all every single round so there was never any free information but mobby star riders constantly opened things up for themselves opened up the the options quite literally opened up doors and now as sprout move into the pistol round this is essential they've got searson and favin both on utility buys without armor as the p250 makes its way into the hands of searson previously we've seen this dropped over to favin um, but evidently not currently feeling it He's just sitting down with the utility support. Still coming through with two kills early on, though. Big balls from Opos. They're opening the door. A very, very dangerous play indeed. And, of course, he found that out. A nice shot from Soaker, though. Will at least return it to a three-on-three. But in the meantime, they heard those steps going down through vents. So they know that the bomb now probably being taken down on towards B. They'll hear that the plant is indeed beginning to go through. They do at least have a fuse getting a smoke to work with. Still, though, it's going to be a tough retake coming through. This B-bomb site, always quite difficult to get the, the retake on here on Nuke, of course. Favin trying to hold the flank, coming down through Secret. Soaker is going to have to try and deal with that Glock on close range, rather. Up in the vent, as they managed to actually meet face to face. And it wasn't really on good terms, unfortunately. Alex going to return one at least. A second oh. shot towards Favin, and now it's all on Keo. The man that we pointed out on the first map has been so impactful. Can he be such as now as he gets the force pushing through death's trying to stick it just enough time for him to just spam away and eventually takes his time to get the headshot that is indeed going to be Sprout picking up a round that was to say the very least much needed seven to nine two rounds into the difference and this one should just be a straight up eco for mobby star so we should see it being brought up to just a one round gap mobby star or no, sorry sprout are playing very weird to what we normally see Right there, that peak in the 2v2 was so risky with so much time left. I mean, if he had a smoke and dropped that down with the kit, it was over. They would have won that round on the, over on mm. the CT side. Especially with uh, his teammate's position, it just wasn't needed. Yeah, exactly. And behind the doors as well. I mean, they have to push through and open those doors to get you. They You have an angle towards the bomb if they go to defuse it. There's only going to be one guy if they're sticking it, and you'll also know exactly where they are. They hear they're coming down the ramp. Favin opens the door. It would be forgivable if, I think, Keto also swings out and you double face, but he didn't. They, like It was like just a completely solo play. and I don't get it because you gain nothing. It's not an information play. You already know they're there. They've been hurt. It's just very wild situation.
The only oh, thing I'm thinking it. of now is maybe, maybe they thought that he was towards, uh, that they, he was going to be peaked on top of. Maybe he opened the doors to peek out to try and help out in that regard. But I don't know. Trades go down early on, at least. Sprout looking decent, but force buy from Mobbystar Riders hasn't got, like, a whole lot of weaknesses. Down towards the side, gets picks up one. A lot of damage done to Searson. Yeah, Alex actually almost caught him with one bullet there as he was crossing as well. That would have been enough. Fortunately, it wasn't the case for Searson. He will be able to just get that bomb down. And they still have a couple of Molotovs. There's the one bullet that he needed around the edge of the smoke. Mirbe pushing up close against the CZ. Will be able to win that fight out. And now it's Mopo's in the 1v1. And a glass cannon auto shotgun. Not the ideal weaponry, but he is it. He's getting up close. The shoulder though being spotted. He's trying to chase it down. He needs to do so quickly. Gets the damage in and brings him so low to eventually finish it off. But what's the time going to be like? He does actually have a defuse kit. So there's plenty. Oh my god. I'm, uh, how does he manage to win that out? I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I was, uh, I mean, that was pretty close. If that was a real life scenario, I wouldn't be comfortable saying it was plenty, but. <laughs> Well, I mean, it, it sounded like there was plenty. It wasn't taken away too fast, you know? All right. I, my hands will be shaking, but all right. Oh, yeah, no. I feel like <laughs> you'd be nervous defusing the real-life bomb no matter what, but in the end, this is a video game. Oh, and there's, there's no chance of... Uh, there's no chance of permanent death. There's no chance of failing the actual defuse. Oh. You have enough time to go for it, you know? It's not as fun, then. No, it's, it's definitely yeah. not. It's not as high stakes. <laughs> no high stakes table. <laughs> Welcome to the high stakes tail. It was a bomb under your seat. <laughs> Good luck. Mix what? Oh man, that was some decent damage. Wait, what, what weapon did he have there? Um, I think it was a P250. That's. I mean, Mix was lucky to be alive. Two kills on the board. Still hunting down, holding the pixel angle. He spotted a one player going down secret. There's speedy up close. Eliminated already. Three, three kills on six HP. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Stoker goes down to long range deke. What, so just going back to the round where Fabin peaked, I think I, the reason I just wanted to kind of try try to find a reason was that like I don't want to be too harsh, uh, but I I do feel like Sprout in general have been a little bit less like switched on than we normally see them, right? Like not that they're not taking it seriously or anything, but just like they don't seem to be making the right decision. Decision making is kind of off compared to what we normally see under cohesion. I wonder if there's something going on there. In the background, maybe it's just an off day. I mean, it happens, right? Um, but I, I feel like just the doors open is such a bad play that there had to be a reason behind it. Like the sound made it sound, made it sound like there was someone above him. Rumble's doing decent on the Deagles. The problem is like they have no armor, right? So if you get into a duel, if you miss that one shot for the headshot, you're done. You're gonna get torn apart unless it's on a mix wall. And maybe you can just spam in the in the. Yeah, yeah, there's a problem. Nice rounder from Opos as well. Against those Kevlarless opponents, it's it's not really too difficult, especially if they aren't moving in quickly. There to at least like rush up into your face. If you're just taking those peaks one by one, it's it's gonna be tough for you to really get anything done. Sprout, of course, coming onto the buy now, goes without saying that this round is extremely important to them. If they don't manage to take this, then we'll be looking at Mobby Star Riders taking a 13 to 7 lead here on the CT side of Nuke, and at that point, the uh, the chances of Sprout will have fallen quite drastically. Even right now, being behind by four on the T side of Nuke is not really where you want to be. Not a position that you're going to be too comfortable in. It's definitely going to be a bit of an uphill battle right now for the German side. They do actually manage to find that outside control quite easily. Alex just in towards the garage isn't really going to be able to do anything about it. And of course, with that, no rotations happen to come down towards B. But in the meantime, Mixwell does even take down Spitty. So a man advantage at least found from Star Riders right now. No, oh, not lasting too long as Mopaz goes down. Molotov over towards main. Stops any pushes coming back through and any info from being gained as Brad ultimately. Uh, I don't know actually. The bomb's not moved all too much. Thinking they were going to go down towards B. They're very slowly taking secret control. They have an idea that there's going to be a player uh, maybe towards the top of secret, but Alex has been playing from back in garage quite a bit. So I. Uh, they're kind of free to ignore anything uh, anything towards there. Eventually hitting the A bomb site. It wasn't B as we thought. It's kind of a slow take down there. Uh, didn't make a whole lot of sense. Oh no, his feet are visible. Fabin goes down. 
The smoke wasn't quite on point. Soaker cut behind it, though, not able to push around. Has one angle to fight USP out. Not able to land that kill. Mixwell goes down as well. Okay. Not before he can get a Molotov frag. Well, actually, yes, before he can get a Molotov frag. But from the grave, <laughs> he finds it. So it's in with 2v2. Low HP on Keto with the bomb planted. Yeah, just trying to hold that heaven peeker right now. That's he already used the flash peek through and will indeed be able to finish off that low HP player. So it's all on the Saracen now with the up pushed forward though in a great position to force this one versus one. Alex trying to be careful, but still gets taken down. Death puts in a tiny bit of damage, but nothing really too substantial right there. Taps the bomb to try and bait the peek out. And Saracen balls to steal right now as he doesn't actually go to check. Time running down so low, it just can't be done anymore. This is Saracen picking up the round win no matter what. And he just takes the frag either way. 8 to 11. As I said, a gun round there that was very important for Sprout will actually end up going in their favor. And when we look at the economy now from obviously our riders, Mopo's on a double eco. Dex, I think, was sitting around a double eco as well. He actually dropped the UMP over and got a deagle in return. Actually, no, Death was the one with money right there. But yeah, he dropped the op over. It was uh, elsewhere that we see Stoker buying himself the uh, UMP. The deagle was returned by Mixwell, who was pretty low on money. So yeah, a little bit of an awkward position to be in right now. There's going to be a lot of pressure on the shoulders right now. Mixwell be the only one who actually has a rifle in play. One thing we were talking about towards the start of this was how well Mixwell seems to be playing with this team. Most recently, and certainly in this series. Or in the last map. We'll, uh, we'll pretend the first map didn't happen. And uh, yeah, he's, he's certainly top fragging the server. 20 kills on the board. Having a swell old time. Taking a look at the buy, obviously, with Mixwell having that op, this is where he needs to continue to have that impact if they want to have a chance to take in this round. He's looking for fights anywhere he can find them, but at the moment, nothing's being given away. Sprout playing very slow. Time might become their, become their enemy. At the end of the day, they have no progress towards a bombsite just yet. Luckily, there's very low utility for Movistar Riders, so they're not able to, like, Molotov off some of these angles. Cost them pushing forward. Even if that did happen, though, spread of a couple of smokes left over to combat that. Or indeed, the smoke for post plants. Oh, they push towards Rampo. There's three players here. It's going to be very scary. All the kills go down to Death. And Alex, AWP still here to stop him pushing down further. But Mixwell knows he can't stick around. Goes towards outside. Searson drops down. He hasn't been heard. Searson's got that angle. He's got the information. Surely he's got the information. But okay, flicks around eventually and finds the kill. But there's 20 seconds left. Yeah, a little bit awkward there for Mixwell. Unfortunately, not realizing there was a player still around there, but. As we do see Speedy come in and take down Soaker now, they should be able to get this bomb down on A. Saracen is the read that Mopo's coming up the vent as well and will go ahead and just finish it off. So, a, a, a much closer round for Sprout than they would have hoped for. They end up taking quite a bit of damage, so I feel like Movistar can be somewhat happy with how that force play went. But overall, I feel like it could have been a little bit better. Unfortunately, Mixwell missing a couple of opportunities over towards the ramp. It came down to the pistols, really only been able to get a one-for-one -one trade each, or rather a, a two-for-two. Easier way to say it. As now a fully go will have to come true. So an opportunity for Sprout to actually build themselves up a little bit of money. Especially Keto, who's brought a Mac 10 into play, of course. And has just spotted himself a couple of wild players pushing in through ramp. Kevlarless as well. Chews them up with that Mac 10. And the lobby aggression doesn't go too much better. Mixwell gets one frag at least, but not really too impactful in the end. A relatively clean round there from Sprout. Although Keto didn't manage to pick that rifle back up, so they did take an 8k out of play. One thing I loved was how Searson was able to read that the player would come up through vents, and yet when he heard Mixwell stomping up behind him, it was like yeah. a last-second reaction. <laughs> it was a nice shot, though, given that he was just waiting. He was just doing a style. Now. So, early direction towards A, but again, not aggressing on the back of it too heavily. Keto makes his way down into secret. He's creeping around with the Mac-10, hoping to catch some players off guard. The Over on the Movistar Riders side, you've got the glass cannon on Mixwell, which is not ideal. He's still playing pretty well. Despite the little bit of a botched rotate that he had coming up behind Searson, stomping. But the, uh, the thing was, I mean, it, it would have been weird to suspect Searson being there. He was about a second late. To hear Searson dropping down as well, which was actually probably even less than a second. It was unfortunate. The timing just butchered him. Flashes towards the back. I mean, they can't really do anything on the back of that because they're smoked off. But they're just going to try to bail on down the vents. Claim a little bit of control down in secret. Look at them. 
Oh, yeah, just all creeping down. It's like, shh, guys, they'll never know. <laughs> and they've been doing this a bit, like, making presents towards A isn't uncommon. Now is that those windows break, though. Mobby starting to know what's going, on, what's going down. Yeah, but it's a, it's a little bit late. The bomb now is going to be planted, and a 5-on-5 five five retake towards B is quite difficult. Both sides also not really having very much utility to work with at all. For the actual retake, Mobby Star Riders, they have two flashes, no defuse kit. And then over on the Sprout side, there's a, a couple of flashes, and a, or a few flashes and a Molotov. But that's not going to matter, because Mobby Star Riders realizing that a 5-on-5 five five retake towards B with little utility and no defuse kit is quite unlikely. So in the 5-on-5, five five, they're just going to go ahead and back away and save. And, the, and this is understandable, because it's about to be 11-11. to 11. They want to give themselves a good buy in this next round. And carrying over all these weapons means Mixwell can get himself armored. The rest of the players, including Mixwell also, will be able to buy up utility. And it'll just be a much, much stronger investment in general. Well, Rather than having no eco, of course. Dean, I'll, I'll tell you something, right? It's a smart decision being made. But that's the first round I've ever seen. Ever. Where only 10 damage is done. I think, I, I think I've seen somewhere... I, I, think, I don't think I've seen a full gun round, but I think I've seen a round where yeah. there was like a pistol stack coming in and stuff. And then you'd see the uh, bombsite being taken cleanly and then they just wouldn't leave the yeah, other bombsite. Yeah. They'd just save the, the pistols and Kevlar. Yeah, but in the sure. actual gun round, it doesn't happen too often. Normally, they'll at least try and get a, get a bit of damage. If they lose one player, then they'll be like, okay, just give up. We'll, we'll go save now. Yeah, indeed. No, well, when, when it is a full buy is what I meant. It's the first round like that. Oh, they pushed in. They're caught by Fav, and Murbit was pushed back by a Molotov, which meant he could support his teammate, forced to play together. Sprout have claimed a man advantage. Now, Mavi Star Riders not going to be feeling too good on, on the back of that. I mean, you get the idea. Alex is creeping towards the outside. Keto's not spotted him. Keto goes down. Turn back into a 3v3. Low HP on Favin. Murbit down a little bit low. That Molotov's going to be pesky. Murbit's at 36. He takes that one bullet. But eventually, Favin goes down to the Molotov. Mixed ball takes Spitty. And just like that, Mavi Star Riders finally get the train going on their CT side. But yeah, on the... Uh, and that round there, you get the idea. You throw the Molotov towards Squeaky so you can push main without worrying about them like five-man pushing out Squeaky and just swapping places with you. Claiming the A-side control and you're in T-spawn going, oh, we, we got to go back in. But uh, you, you get the idea, but it doesn't work out well because then it was Mixwell just, he was going to push through. Then he had to Hang on, back. Mitch. Merba has a P90. Oh, I didn't even see that. What's, uh, yeah, that's, uh, well, look, early on they've been smoking, they've been going down vents, so it's going to be useful down in secret. Maybe. He did also just get naded quite heavily right there. While dropping on the vent, uh, I think it was Mixwell just underhand righted a, uh, a nade right towards his feet. That's a nice little bit of damage being found, although, as you said, it could get a little bit dangerous now. It does seem like Sprout want to focus on trying to split in towards this B-bomb site, and that's where the P90 definitely can be successful. In these uh, closer range indoor positions, Cirrus is going to be able to take down Deaths over towards Ramp, who was in a position where he wouldn't really be able to fall back off, had to try and take the fight. Down in towards the actual lower bomb site then as well. Keo now being spotted by Mixwell, who's not in the greatest of positions, but he does have a bit of help now from Soaker, who's rotated in. So quickly returned to a four on four as the bomb goes down. Mirbit, he's holding the flank though, so Mopo's dropped in towards Ramp. Four v three, Sprout looking good. At this point, Movistar Riders with the money that's in play with the time. The lack of utility on most players. They're making the right call to just bail out and go for the save. Not to mention the man disadvantage, obviously. Saving over towards Garage. They'll stack up. They'll huddle. Make sure that they're uh, going to be at least able to trade if these guys start to push on forward. Sprout not really in positions to stop them. Murbit was maybe, but he was so low that he couldn't really afford to go hunting down. 12 to 12, we're all tied up in a position that honestly, after that first terrorist half, I didn't think we'd see. Mobby Star Riders were looking on point, but Sprout have started to wake up a little bit. Actually, really well rounded performance from Sprout. They're all like plus minus two from the average kills, which is really good. Um, a little bit more, a little bit more one sided, I suppose, on the uh, Mobby Star Riders side. Deaths is definitely having a much rougher game than what we've seen from, from him on train. Yeah, he was the one who led the way, if I remember correctly, on train as well. So 
It's it's a little bit awkward. You want to see him stepping it up when they're over on the CT side. It's been Mixwell who's led the charge pretty con uh, convincingly. Soaker also having some nice rounds, as has Alex. I mean, I, f I feel like they've all definitely had some, some decent impact. It's just deaths we were uh, hoping to see that performance from Train carrying on. 12 to 12 right now, though, so still a game that could go either way. Coming down to the wire in map number three here is both of these teams, of course, want to take that grand final spot. Where they will, of course, face off against Vitality. The loser going down into the, uh, the third place decider to take on Team Spirit. A very slow round from Sprout. Eventually now going to begin to actually push forward onto the safe bomb site, but even with that, there's smokes down. So yeah, it's going to drop down in towards Vent. Mixwell on the up going to be the one that's here to try and defend it, but it's going to be awkward. Just drops the Molotov. With the amount of time that's actually on the clock right now, that could be quite awkward. They get the kill towards Single Gordo, taking down Mopos, and now they want to bring it back up towards A. Make your mind up, guys. This is getting awkward. There's 20 seconds left. Death is playing around the smoke. The bomb goes down. It will be traded back. But this is just so much more awkward than it should have been. Uh, Nixwell just tries to run to the site with his knife out. I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> that was a questionable attempt at best. Um, I there's three, there's two other players alive outside of the planter. I don't know in what universe there's um there's not going to be a guy covering him, like two in secret watching Vance. We we got your back, bro. Don't worry. <laughs> I I I. Did he think it was like a 3v1? <laughs> that was weird. I would imagine not. Yeah, well, I would hope not. The um, I'd love to get his opinion on on what the uh, what the play <laughs> what the play was there. I just looked so funny. It was like just running forward, knife at. I got him, guys. I got this. Shot in the face. <laughs> it's no chance. Like uh, that that that's one of those. It's not even. Do you ever see those? Um, PS goal and she's a 1% bets. <laughs> it's like a 0.1%. I know, Maybe it just they... wasn't happening in any world. <laughs> if they completely whiff all their shots. Even if there wasn't a player who could see the run up across that area, there at the very least would have been, been a player in the single door who would have just been able yeah. to shoot him in the back while he was trying to get the knife. So I, I just don't really see that winning, uh, that working out for him in any way, really. And of course, in a round that was extremely crucial, you see coming into this round now, they're left on a, a relatively weak fight. They find what they can. Cirrus just gets a wall bang onto Alex and Sprout right now. They've had an incredible T side showing here on Nuke so far. This is heartbreaking from Star after they started it off so well here on map number three, after they grinded their way through train, a map that we didn't really give them any hope on. But it looks like it may all fall apart as they get, as they had gotten themselves ever so close to that finish line. That was a crazy shot by Searson. He had no idea. Oh, yeah. No, he, he, was, jumps. he was just jumping and shooting repeatedly through the smoke. And like, that was a, a landing it. a landing wall bang through smoke kill. Or I think he may have been slightly blinded. Was he not by a flash that had been tossed in the air as well? Was he? Oh, that's even worse. <laughs> I, I'm not sure. I might be wrong. There was was a, either way, there was a lot going on. That's all you can say. He's a... Uh, the last round and the beginning of this one being interesting for sure. 5 on 4 in play, there's very little ability left from of their riders. But the time is, again, becoming perhaps somewhat of an issue. There's 30 seconds remaining, so we will have to see Sprout pushing forward very soon. A frag coming in over towards the A-bomb site there from Favin. The damage even been put in towards Soaker as well, as Mixwell has to be careful on outside. Cirrus in the close with just a few 50 in hand. Takes the headshot. And now it's Deaths and Soaker left to try and save this round, and potentially the matchup right now because it is going to be Mavi Star looking at an eco in this next round which should allow for Sprout to take fifth, uh, take 15 of course putting themselves on map and series point the scary spot for Mavi Star Soaker's super low Soaker's dead it's all on death to try to get it done spot one on a far UMP in hand picks up a kill they don't actually know if he's up or down that's the, that's the benefit here they could think he's in hell or they could think he's in heaven but behind the vents, it's a weird spot to save it. Yeah, they know, though. They've spotted him out. He's not getting out of there on it. Refacing was not the play. They've not got a lot of cash here. I mean, like, there's going to be players on UMPs. Would it be nice to carry a UMP forward? Um, and realistically, like, I, I just... Plays like that annoy me, right? You're refacing. You risk losing armor and a UMP. Could even drop that to someone to buy an M4 right now. Um, and what do you gain? Well... He didn't get a kill, but if he got one, let's say he got two kills. Great, spread of a 
shed ton of money that they don't care. Like the the damage that you do to your buy in this round is far greater than the damage you could even potentially do if you kill all the sprout players, which isn't going to happen. Up on high ground, caught behind a vent with two AKs looking for long range. It's a weird one. That's so when you see plays like that happen that you generally see a team go, uh, go in a down, downward spiral. You come into this. Hey, look, you know, it's the best weapon they have. No I'm forced to make an appearance as they go in for uh, a weaker investment. Yeah, Maybe just a half slice. I mean, that's understandable. Three rounds in a row on the CT side is definitely doable to take it into overtime. Make sure they get a, a, a solid buy here in this next round. It's just not a position that they would, would have actually expected themselves to be in, most likely, after having such a solid T-side shown. And also then coming through in this second half. Sure, they lost the pistol, but they ended up winning the force buy in the next round. In the gun rounds in general here on this second half, Sprout have showed some uh, some pretty clear dominance, to say the least. Taking their time now on this one, though. As we know, up against that weaker investment, they don't want to give any opportunities for Mobby Star Riders to snatch away any weapons. There by Mirabib. Before she did get traded back and actually soak her as well. Alex from behind should have a quick double kill very easily here with the CZ. Although he is traded by Saracen, Mobistar Riders are actually making this force by work right now. They have the bomb. Saracen's just gonna push forward in the smoke. And there wasn't really much that he could do right there with a player up beside him and also, of course, the AK spotting him from back in lobby. 13 to 14 around there for Mobistar Riders that they just snatch away off the back of, as you said, a buy that had at best a UMP and MP9 and just pistols. Of course, Sprouse still have enough to reinvest, but if they end up losing this one, then they would be struggling to get the buy out a little bit in this next round. I mean, this series has been held close, and last time they played, it was 16-13 to Sprout. Oh, so much of spotted jumping down, his feet visible as he flew through the air. The smoke didn't quite cover as much as he was hoping. Uh, there's not too much of an angle there for Murr, but he might decide to just spam, though. Doesn't could have found a, a very nice little kill. Makes wall goes up a little bit too far on top of the stairs, taking down the one for one. Eastside now with the man advantage, moving away over towards the site. Great shot by Searson. And now with the bomb plan being easily obtained, unless someone runs on the site and knifes them, that's the only way to stop it. You know that. Makes wall's not here to save the day though. So it's Alex and Mopaz to try and pull back a 2v4. Yeah, and I don't think they really want to go for it. Especially when you look at the fact that Mopo's already has 3,000 in the bank. He'll be able to drop a rifle over to Detz, who doesn't have enough to buy. Mixwell and Soaker can then buy for themselves. So it will allow for them to actually get a full investment through as long as they can save both of these weapons. Of course, very much needed at this point, as it will be two rounds uh, two rounds in a row, rather. But they will have to take just to send it into overtime. Sprout now backing off. Not going to be looking to try and hunt those down. Not too aggressively anyway. We do see Mirabit coming into a little bit of contact there over towards the T-spawn. Picking down Lodo. He probably doesn't want to risk losing his own weapon. I mean, they would have been okay, actually, of course, with only uh, a couple of rounds remaining. But either way, wasn't really worthwhile for him. Here we go. Pause coming true. Most likely from obvious that riders as they, they try and discuss what's going to happen here. Full buy... As I said, they get out the utility, at least onto pretty much everyone. The main thing that they are lacking, of course, is the op, which has been quite impactful for Mixwell when he's had it available. So that is a little bit... A little bit sucky, I guess is one way to put it, but he did have enough for it if he wanted it. So obviously they decided against that, meaning they may have a little bit of a plan in mind about what they actually want to do. Maybe a bit more aggressive here on the CT side, because they have been kind of getting picked off one by one while sitting back and playing those kind of standard sight holds giving up the outside control, etc., and then just having to worry about secret and down on B so much as well. That's also been a bit of an issue for them. With this buy, like, a Sprite don't have a lot of financial security for the next. Um, but they'll be running dry in terms of utility because they'll have to drop over some AKs. So, I mean, like, it, it's an okay spot for Star if they find this one. This is, the, this is the real challenge. 
But against an AWP, it's Searson again. He's been playing so long. I mean, we talk about how well Mixwell's doing on that AWP. Searson has been phenomenal as well. Bavin returning to his form of glory. And whilst we saw Keto have a decent start, I mean, he has kind of slowed down a little bit. But it, again, it comes back to what we were saying about it being a very well-rounded scoreboard. Although Spitty isn't playing amazingly, he is doing well in the supportive aspect of the game. Coming through a 14 enemies flash this half, I think. Pretty phenomenal. As well as the fact that he's also had some clutch holes. Uh, one of the ones on the CT side where he found the 2k to pull things back over into their favor, which allowed Searson to then close out the round a little bit later on. So he's definitely doing his job, even though he's towards the bottom of the scoreboard. Star have got a little bit more of a one-sided performance. Mixwell and Soaker pulling up a lot of the weight. Alex was one of the really big players in the previous map. Lacking a little bit. Running dry on utility in terms of the Molotovs with the CT side. Sprout and I are going to attempt to push towards A. Alex has smoked off an upper, drops a molly down, though even though he can see through, he's able to help his teammates. Just trying to slow Sprout down, so that smoke's at least a little bit faded. Mixwell finds one to open it up. It's traded straight back, though. He's doing okay, but what through the smoke? Alex is going to be picked off. You're down into a one versus two. With deaths on an AK-47, trying to pull it back. Catch a spinning on the open bomb. Dropped. No time. But Searson comes up behind on the P-250. And ultimately closes it out. What a way to finish it off there. Searson finding the final kill. And not even with the AWP. Yeah, just coming up from behind on that quick flank. An, an impressive comeback there from Sprout as well on that T side. Of course, it has to be said. It, it was looking like it was going to be a Mobistar Riders game, especially after after they did come through with that force by after losing the pistol. And, of course, picking up nine rounds, if I remember correctly, on that T side. They picked up, they picked up the last one as well after being sitting on eight for a while. But, um, yeah, just a, a great show in there from Sprout. And it was just, it was getting dicey. I, I'm not going to say I had the faith in it after seeing them go through that first map so convincingly, then losing train in such a close fashion and getting off to a poor starter on Nuka. Seemed like maybe it was in their head a little bit after that, that they had lost train, a map that sort of should have almost certainly been theirs, rather, but they managed to come back. It was a 10 to 4 for them on their terrorist side. I mean, this is something that we're seeing from Sprout a little bit that their E side definitely isn't uh, terrible, you could say. Uh, th there was a lot of um, there was a lot of kind of inconsistency throughout this series. I think they're going to face a, a little bit of a challenge uh, when you move over to the finals and then even onto the the global challenge in general, because like there were a lot more mistakes than what we usually see from them. And I'm just going to go out on a limb and assume it was just an off day, but they did start out so well. It, it was that kind of gradual decay in performance when they moved to train over on the terrorist side, and then coming in here as well. A couple moments where, where they just weren't looking as on point as usual. But all in all, I mean, they managed to take the series. It was super close, despite what we expected to be a one-sided scoreline. Sort of like a 2-0 to zero for Sprout was definitely on the cards, uh, especially then when the first map came through. I mean, after Overpass, we were like, all right, we're, we're going to be done this in 30 minutes. Managed to take it over to a third map. I'm going to say, well played to Mobistar Riders for being able to reset mentally, because that is not easy to do after being stomped out on your map pick. Yeah, and also to do so on what is probably the opponent's best map. So sure. it's just a, an overall impressive result from them. But unfortunately, didn't get the victory here. Of course, as we said, that was not the end of the road for them. But I do just have to give a big congratulations to Sprout, who have already qualified for the Global Challenge, of course, alongside Vitality, who qualified in the uh, previous matchup by taking down Team Spirit. Yeah, absolutely. They're going to be joining Chiefs, ATK, Furia, Party Astronauts, and Singularity there. But there is still one more team to be decided as we're either going to see Mobby Star Riders or we're going to see Spirit join them. And that'll be decided tomorrow. Also, the finals tomorrow to decide who gets that uh, juicy little bit of uh, uh, top spot or a better seating as you move through the seating, as well. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I was going to say cash, but then they're actually still in with a chance to make, to make the same amount of money. So it's all about the seating. But yeah, that's it for the semifinals. We got the third place decider in the finals coming up tomorrow. So make sure to drop a follow on the channel to get notified when we go live with that. And without further ado, we'll let you guys uh, go off, get yourselves good old sleep. It's uh, relatively late where we're at. And we'll, uh, we'll catch you in the next one.